Scott, we have boats out on the river. All we have left to do to make it a successful day is run the final heat and crown a champion. And Mark, we only need five laps to make that happen. Let's hope we get them in. Let's take a look at the boats in the final heat for the Atomic Cup. The Miss Elam Plus, Dave Vilwak, looking to be the second boat in history to flip and win. If anybody can catch him, it might be Jimmy King driving the U3, piston-powered Conover Insurance. The U5FormulaBoats.com, one of the two Formula Boats here, and they made it into the final. We'll be driven by Mike Allen, we understand. Oh boy, Alberto, Steve David in the U6, the point leader so far with a thousand points on the day. And J.W. Myers in the U10 Miss Solutions Plus. That has the boat with the long yellow snorkel on it when we see the yellow boats come by. And the U21, the black and gold area codes cellular driven by the rookie, Kevin Aylesworth out of San Diego. And the trailer is going to be Jean Theorette and the U37 Miss Beacon Plumbing. He's looking for his second win in a row. He won two weeks ago at the Gold Cup, but uh, he's in the trailer position now, and uh, that is going to put him at a disadvantage. Let's check out the drivers. Theoret certainly would have been one of the favorites had he not been relegated to the trailer boat spot. This guy has to be the boat to watch. Dave Billwalk from Auburn, Washington, the Elster Manufacturing Miss Elam Plus. And here's a look at Jimmy King, all the way from Michigan to drive here this weekend. Certainly one of the favorites if he gets a good lane in the U3. Piston power could take him to the front. Mike Weber out. To, actually, it's going to be Mike Allen, his uh, teammate, out in the U5. They put Mike Allen out in the boat all afternoon, and uh, he is uh, coming into the race was the leader in the National Drivers High Points Championship. Here's Steve David. He's had quite a day. He's been involved in some incidents, came through them unscathed, came into the final heat with the most points of anybody, could jump up and win this thing. J.W. Myers in the U10, Miss Solutions Plus. J.W. new to this boat, but he's getting the feel of it, and he's another guy who is a hard charger, and this boat could win. Kevin Aylesworth, the rookie, is just doing a great job in Kevin Musc uh, Ken Muscatel's old U25. Now it's the U25, U21, area codes cellular. Young man's done an outstanding job. He's had a great day. And trailing the field will be Jean Theoret in the U37. The Miss Beacon Plumbing is not where he wanted to be, but he had a little bit of trouble earlier in the race, and now he is the seventh boat in the fleet. And as we said, Theoret certainly would have been one of the favorites. We would have been watching for him to go to the front. That is obviously not going to happen as he has to start behind the whole field. No way even with that kind of boat speed that he can catch the leaders. A minute 20 now to the start as the field is forming up. J.W. Myers did this earlier. Took the inside very, very early. Plowed water all the way up around the end of the race course and secured lane one that way. We'll see if he's able to do it again. Theoret tucks in behind him. Vilwak running up the course behind those two and we see red to the right of J.W. Meyer so that is either the U3 or the Formula Boats. I think that may very well be Jimmy King in the uh, U3 Conover Insurance. Steve David now starts to bring up the field, and we've got the uh, Formula Boats also coming up through the field as well. Dave Billwalk again going to be in an outside lane, not way to the inside, but in an outside lane, probably a lane number three. Three, it looks like he may be sliding into three or even four. Kevin Aylesworth fans down in San Diego, we have bad news. He's at the dock. His boat did not start, so we have six boats running. Theoret still will have to uh, trail the field now. We've got to see what happens here with J.W. Myers on the inside. He's going to have a great lane, but does he have enough race boat to hold off all the speed that will be out to his right? Look at this beautiful shot now as they turn toward us with the setting sun lighting up those rooster tails. Watch the clock at 7, 6. Six, five, here comes the start, Mark. Everybody's backing down just a little bit. Looks like now they will be legal by about three boat lengths, and three of them lead them across. It's J.W. Myers, Jimmy King, and Dave Vilwak coming across the line dead even as they cross the line and head for that Blue Bridge turn. In his previous heats, Vilwak has driven around the field in the first turn. Can he do it here? He's got a lot of speed over there. J.W. Myers still okay on the inside, but Jimmy King sticks his red nose out in front of him. We've at least a two-boat race up the back stretch, and, and now, now, three. now we see some orange. Look at this. Three boats side by side accelerating to 170, 180, close to 200 miles per hour now, and it's Jimmy King with the horsepower to stick his nose out ahead. Halfway up the backstretch, Jimmy King about a one-boat lead over Dave Vilwalk. He's outside of him. He's buried in the rooster tail. You can't see him, and it's J.W. Myers
cars on the inside in the Miss Solutions. Plus, this is going to be a drag race all the way around. Dave Billwalk and Jimmy King dead even. A tight, tight turn by J.W. Myers as they come off the turn and head for the end of lap number one. J.W. had it right on the boy line. And look at Jimmy King. The Pistons are screaming. Dave Billwalk is going to go by him right at start finish. But King will still have the inside. And he still has J.W. Myers off to his left. Those three boats are going to be neck and neck as our first turn camera picks them up. Watch this turn. You've got J.W. Myers on the inside. He still controls the race course, but Jimmy King has dropped back about two boat lengths, and Dave Vilwalk leads off the turn, now about one boat length, and you could throw a blanket really over all three of them, only about three boat lengths between first, Dave Vilwalk and the Elam, second, the Conover Insurance and Jimmy King, and third, J.W. Myers in this Miss Solutions Plus. Jimmy King's boat hopped just a bit right at the exit pin, and it cost him a little bit as Vilwalk was able to move away. Jimmy is slowing down. We heard a big pop. Goes by him. We heard a pop. The youth three has lost an engine and Jimmy King is out of it and now it's up to J.W. Myers in the U10 to chase Dave Vilwalk and that's exactly what he's doing. He has position on the inside but he has perhaps the fastest race boat in the history of this sport to try to catch as Vilwalk comes down to finish lap two. Flying the boat across the start finish line at the end of lap two is Dave Vilwalk and J.W. Myers loses a little ground as they come down the straightaway. Your leader heading into the Blue Bridge turned by a full rooster tail length now and J.W. Myers has moved to the outside, so Dave Billwalk has the course under his control. And we have a story back in third place because it's Jean Theoret. He was the trailer boat. If he stayed legal and started behind the field, he has accomplished quite a bit. He's gotten by Mike Allen in the red boat and Steve David as well. That, that's quite an accomplishment, Mark. Halfway up the back stretch, you've got Dave Vilwalk now leading by three full rooster tails. He has the race under control on the third of five times around. I think we failed to mention, but the final is a five lap final and they are still running. But Mike uh, <laughs> J.W. Myers now has fallen back and Dave Vilwalk has this course under control. We still have four boats in less than a quarter of a lap. They are led by Dave Vilwalk. It's a beautiful sight as they turn toward us and the setting sun lights up those rooster tails. Billwalk comes by us now at start finish and the overlap back to the U10 is just about this long as J.W. Myers comes by right now. So if somebody has hooked or missed a buoy, and I think that may be John Theoret. Theoret is driving through the infield. He apparently missed a buoy. He talked about the sun being a problem for him as he headed west, and he apparently missed a buoy. He's gone now to pick it up, and that's put Steve David back up into third place. Dave Billwalk now off the first turn and heading up the back stretch. Second place, J.W. Myers now just off that second turn. And so it's almost a half a straightaway lead for Dave Billwalk on the fourth of five times around. So Jean Theoret continues to give us thrills. We were looking entirely the other direction, and when we looked up, he was driving through the infield, apparently feeling he had to go back and pick up a boy. Jimmy King was going to give Dave Vilwalk all he wanted in this heat. His engine went away and kept us from the excitement that that would have provided. Too bad, because now it looks like it's going to be all Vilwalk as he comes down to take the white flag. He'll have one, one lap to go for another Columbia River Championship, and Dave, of course, has a few of those already. Now, J.W. Myers comes by. Pretty good weekend for the team from Las Vegas in the U-10 if they hang on to this second-place position. Yeah, considering they ripped the bottom out of the boat in uh, Detroit, and they had a lot of problems. They had to fix this boat and get it back into shape. So J.W. getting some seat time, uh, but he is a full turn now behind your leader, Dave Vilwalk, off of turn number one, the Blue Bridge turn, on his last time around. And as you watch Dave Vilwalk, the third-place boat, Steve David, is just come by us here so he is nearly a half lap back we have some pretty good racing on the front straightaway here that our camera will pick up as it comes by because the uh, the red formula boats is being chased by Jean Theoret they are racing for fourth and fifth place but putting on a pretty good show back there we're showing it to you now as they come into the turn we'll go back to the leader as he heads up here because he'll be taking the checkered flag and there is Dave Vilwalk turning to the east for the final time this weekend he'll come down to take the checkered flag and the championship here in Atomic Cup 2000.
2006. And another tight turn by J.W. Myers. He's not given up, but Dave Billwalk has crossed the finish line in first place, and it will be the U-10 Miss Solutions Plus with J.W. Myers in second place, and our third place boat now at the top of the final turn, and that should be Steve David and the Oboy Alberto. And we've got a pretty good little race here between John Theoret and Mike Allen for fourth and fifth place as That's they the come red, through the turn. Which is the race you're looking at right now in the foreground. You see Steve David coming by to take third place, but let's watch this little scrap here for fourth and fifth as they turn toward a side-by-side. It looks like the boat on the outside. Sean Theoret, who remarkably enough, came from the trailer boat position, passed everybody, then did an extra half lap when he had to go by, uh, pick up a boy and is going to come up with a fourth place finish here. No small accomplishment as he finishes ahead of Mike Allen in the formulaboats.com. So the final heat kind of went according to the racing form, but it did give us some excitement, especially in the first heat because of the great start by J.W. Myers and the apparent ability of Jimmy King and the piston-powered U3 to run with Dave Vilwalk. In the end, too much driver, too much race boat. Let's send it down to the pits and Scott Reister. Yeah, here with Rick Swanson after that incredible win. Rick, how about that day? You start out with a flip, you end up winning the rest of the way. How are you guys feeling? Hey, man, we are absolutely elated. That was just phenomenal. J Dave just drove the pants off the boat out there, just flew it around the corner. Oh, we're, we're just ecstatic. I mean, we didn't expect to be here uh, after the, after blown over, but, you know, here we are. So, I mean, what can we say? It's just, this is just awesome. All right, we're waiting for Vilwock. He's pulled in right now. We'll try to get a word with him in just a moment as Dave Vilwock is now a three-repeat champion here on the Columbia River. Back to you, Mark you, Steve. You know, Steve, we, uh, we keep track of... Uh, Wins and losses. Scott, if you can hear me, grab the guy behind you, Sven Elstrom, who is the patriarch of that family and a delightful guy to talk to. He doesn't usually get very excited, but he might be right now. So, Scott, if you're able to do that, just give us the heads up and we will throw it back to you. Dave Vilwalk is going to take a uh, victory lap with the hatch open as he comes into the pit area, but he'll be down there with you shortly. A lot of a lot of happiness in uh, certainly one of the high quality race teams, Mark, that we've ever seen assembled in this sport. The one run by Eric Elstrom out of uh, Ballard, Washington. Their shop is about two city blocks from the Bardall Manufacturing Company, which gives them some history right there. Well, it hasn't always been that way for the Elstrom team, though. They started out uh, getting their lumps and bumps just like everybody else. And uh, with the boat that debuted in 2001, the boat that won here today, they uh, really stepped up the competition. I was going to say, we, we keep track of drivers' wins and losses. Now, I guess we have to start our flip and win list. We have two tied for the uh, most flips and wins, and that would be Mark Evans and Dave Vilwar. Out on the race course, guys, in the truck, you can see the rescue boat going out to uh, Jimmy King, and that's for a very good reason. Jimmy has a plane to catch, and they have figured out that if they tow the boat back into the pits, he'll miss his plane. So they're going to go out with the rescue boat and get Jimmy King off the uh, U3 floating on the backstretch, and and try to get him over to the dock and to Tri-Cities International in time to catch his plane back to Michigan. This all took a little bit longer today than any of us thought it would, so I'm sure there are a few people with uh, travel plans and things that have to be changed. So Jimmy is okay. He just needs a ride back to the pit area a little faster than he was going to get if he stayed with his race boat. Taking a look at the uh, rescue boat over there right now, and they'll uh, get him uh, off the boat and back into the pits. Uh, off over to the airport as quickly as they can. Maybe they could put him in the official's helicopter here and take him right to uh, TCI. There you go, there's a possibility. Scott, as soon as you have a driver down there, we'll throw it to you. We know there is bedlam in the pit area after a victory like this. This is the second Mark Allen in the history of the flip and win. My little buddy Mark Evans, who uh, raced many times here in the Tri-Cities out of Chelan, did it once in Seattle. That boat probably had more damage internally than this one. This one landed right side up and uh, didn't have a lot of water in the boat messing up the electrical systems or anything like that. New tail feathers, uh, new canard, and they were off and racing. Really didn't miss a step. All nope. day. Nope, they didn't. They uh, they sat out the uh, that heat. They had to because they were the uh, reason for the stoppage. They got back in in heat three, and uh, then in the final heat, and Dave just ran away from everybody. But the first lap, the exactly. first lap was was one of the most exciting laps. Three abreast all the way around. Dave Vilwalk, J.W. Myers, and Jimmy King, and that was worth the price of admission. We saw Dave come off the boat. He's into a cluster of media now, and uh, fortunately, we have a big, healthy youngster in there, Scott Reister, doing our reporting. He'll be among the first to get to Dave, and we'll be able to go back down there uh, momentarily. You're looking at a shot of Jimmy King's boat. 
Um, that's a, a replay because Jimmy is still on the boat. He's actually been taken back to the pit area in hopes that he can uh, catch that plane. Looking at a scene now and some happiness in the pit area as well there should be. There's Dave Vilwalk and his wife Pam, who many times has met her victorious husband on the dock. Um, Go ahead, Scott. And uh, the world championship guys came came to the aid and put the boat back together. We went out and won the next heat, and man, we had lots of power in the finals. He was running great. No, you can't say enough about your crew, can you? No, I can't. I mean, that's that's what championship teams are all about. The teams that have adversity, but don't keep their head in the game. Just it's, uh, I can't say enough for that. You just got to keep your head in the game every single time. Hey, David, at what point did you feel pretty good about bringing this thing home? Uh, about never. It was really, really hard to see. And so, you know, Theoret was pressing there for a while. And, uh, hey, good job. Good job. Good job. Hey, Ethan. Ethan's going to good luck to him. Yeah. He's won here plenty of times. How's this compare? Wow, that's awesome. To get lucky enough to really crash the boat like that and have the team be able to come back and, and fix it and then win and win again and you know we logged a lot of points today so it's an awesome day for our team you know no matter how the points works out we got a race boat still we get to sleep this week we haven't slept for a few weeks so we probably won't be near as itchy so like i said it just can't say no enough about the elstrom family and and eric and the job he's he's a brilliant guy and and he's done so much to keep this team at the level that it is he's he set out to win another championship and i don't know if we can do it or not but we're going to try take us through the last race how'd you get out in front by so far hey, hey. hey. <laughs> pretty good the guys like this that are pretty behind good. us that help pretty us get pretty everything pretty we need the only thing i swept the floor oh, and well. i entered the dumpster yeah. <laughs> okay he's a brilliant guy himself he's 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 the father to an unbelievable company with an unbelievable group of people and family and well, i'm just happy to be part of them well thank you very much this is a heavy okay <laughs> yeah, if you put it there, good, good. Yeah, 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 all right, right guys that was uh, Sven Elstrom coming into your picture there, Scott. Interesting character. Hey, great job down there, young man. Nice day. It was a long day, I know, but you really, uh, really performed well. We're looking now at uh, some replay action from the final heat. That's J.W. Myers running inside of Jimmy King. And at this point, uh, well, now he is. I was going to say that Dave Vilwalk hadn't been a big factor, but here he comes. Yeah, what a great shot. 200 miles an hour, those guys halfway up the backstretch, and the... Uh one or two boat lengths separating each one of them. That's the kind of racing that we come to see. It's the kind of racing we've come to expect from unlimited hydroplanes. And look at that piston boat go. That thing is just incredible. And here is Vilwalk now under control, coming down to take the checkered flag. And another victorious day for the Elstrom family. They had the high points lead until they ran into some trouble in Valley Field and broke their boat. Whether they can recover and get back to the top of that list with the remaining races remains to be seen. But there is no doubt that they are a quality operation mark allen they are a great operation and i would not uh, count them out at this point two more races left to go in the season next week in seattle and then they go to san diego in the middle of september so there are a lot of points yet left to be gathered and i wouldn't uh, count those guys out well i believe it's time to throw it down to scott and christine to take us the rest of the way you have a few minutes before oh, we're going to go back to scott reister with more elstrom action scott go ahead Team motor Eric Elstrom, obviously all smiles. You might even catch your plane back home, huh? <laughs> no, I'm driving home. We'll be here too late. <laughs> Got it. Uh, take us through that last lap, or was it actually previous laps that you kind of just took off and took that thing right? You know, it was really uh, it was a tough race. Cooper's uh, was pulling us down the straightaway, but I think we had a little corner speed on him. And uh, with the U10 on the inside, it was it was a, it was a barn burner for about three laps. When Cooper's went down, it allowed us to move over a little bit. And I think U10 got hung up in some rough water. But for us, you know, to flip in the previous seat, turn the boat around, strip it, rebuild it, put it out there, and to do this, it's just awesome. This really makes the win awesome. This is team owner Eric Elstrom of the Dave Vilwalk Driven U1 Miss Elam Plus. Does this got to rank up there all the time just for the fact that it wasn't just a Vilwalk driving the boat. This was you guys just working around the clock the whole time. Oh, you know, it's always it's a team effort. You know, crew, driver, everything, you know. And uh, God, everyone just pulled together. I mean, uh, these guys are awesome. And. Uh, uh, we came here to do what we wanted to do, which was defend the cup, and we defended, and, 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 and we couldn't have done it. I mean, I, I wouldn't have guessed it two hours ago, three hours ago. You know, we thought the day was over, so this is it's, it's just awesome. It's just right. awesome. We'll go celebrate. Lots of reasons to smile for the Vilwalk and Elstrom team as they are now defending kids. Yeah. 
Mark, Dave Vilwak heard there was an air show, so he wanted to be part of that. He did it all, didn't he? Got in the air, got back onto the water. The crew really did an outstanding job uh, to put a boat through that kind of a contortion, come back and not only compete but win the thing is a remarkable team effort, and you can't overstate that fact. And we'll look at it from above as the uh, boats go through the first turn, and we'll see exactly how tight those boats were bunched in. See Jimmy King and... Uh, Looking kind of in the sun, I can see how the drivers were having a difficult time seeing with that sun angle. Yeah, we're getting to the point up here where our monitors are almost worthless as well. And apparently that did jump up and bite John Theoret. He talked about how hard it was to see running into the sun. It was a spectacular sight for us because the setting sun lit up the rooster tails in an absolutely glorious way when they were down to our left. But Theoret apparently did miss a buoy at one point and have to go back and pick it up. We're looking now at a very high shot of a boat running on the race course. It's That's a the U1. Uh, it is uh, orange, apparently. The sunlight also changing the color a little bit. But that is your winner, Dave Vilwak, from high above the eye in the sky as he was completing the laps here on his way to victory in the 2006 Atomic Cup. Defending his championship from last year, this was the race that Dave stepped into that boat. He's had uh, pretty good success ever since.